Let me begin also by just sharing with you what we're talking about. Um, Darwin defined evolution, progress without planning. Our teachers and mentors laid the foundation on the basis of which we were able to understand and successfully perform ACL reconstructions. The true journey to treat ACL tears started in the mid 70s and 80s when surgical options were either primary ACL repair or reconstruction. With advances in arthroscopic equipment favoring more towards reconstruction with interest towards primary um, ACL, well, that, that issue was lost. And in fact, by revisiting the early 1880s literature or so, um, it gave more in-depth scientific data showing promising results of primary ACL repair in a selected group of patients. We have seen a huge interest, especially in the last five years, towards various techniques on primary ACL repair being published. In fact, in the past 12 months, eight systematic reviews have been published just on that topic alone. The most important question, though, is does a torn ACL have a potential to heal? Can we save the ACL? And this became the focus of this discussion with a friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Umar Bhatt, as you can see here, is a director of sports surgery uh, fellowship uh, at the AO Hospital. He's a director of medical education at the AO Hospital, and he uh, currently also is a national, works at the National um, Hospital in Lahore, Pakistan. He will um, do me the honors, if he can, of introducing his special guest um, as we begin this very interactive and hopefully uh, interesting session for all those attending. Uh, welcome, Dr. Bhatt. Thank you very much, Mo. So kind of you. Uh, it's an honor, always, and pleasure to join your every meeting I attended, and it's uh, it's a great, great, great day for me. Uh, I would like to first of all thank all the team members who have done this amazing program, and I hope it will be very successful in the near future. So today uh, the topic is primary ACL repair. I want to introduce a young surgeon who is very dynamic. I'm really proud that he's from Pakistan, and I'm really proud that he's very academically sound a young, uh, energetic uh, Dr. Muhammad Tahir. Uh, he has done his MBBS and MRCS, and now he's moving to England to pursue his career like I did. And then he will come back to my home country and serve Pakistan. He is resident in orthopedic surgery, Jinnah Postgraduate Medical Center. He is quite a keen researcher and done a lot of research and publication. And I would hand over the first start of the presentation by giving Muhammad Tahir the opportunity to start. All to you, Muhammad. First of all, thank you very much, Mohit and Dr. Omar Bhatt for giving me this opportunity and the Auto Evidence team for such a dynamic series of webinars that you're conducting. Uh, and I'm also grateful to Dr. Omar Bhatt, uh, and I see him as an inspiration for me as well, because a person like him going to the UK and then rather than staying back in the UK, that life would have been much easier coming back to Pakistan. It takes a lot of energy, guts. And I'm very happy and inspired by his personality and hope to do the same by going back, going to UK and coming back from UK and serving my country one day. Uh, Dr. Umar Bhatt is an avid researcher on ACL management and ACL is one of the topics that intrigued me during my training as well. I remember one day, it was 17th of August 2017 when I first saw a patient with ACL tear and I asked my associate professor, uh, should we do a repair? And he said, we don't do repairs on ACL, it's reconstructions. So I am basically from Pakistan. Can we move to the next screen? Uh, uh, this is my hospital. I'm from the metropolitan city of Karachi, the Postgraduate Medical Center. This is a Tertiary Care Level 1 Trauma Center Hospital, uh, the largest in the population. And uh, can we go on to the next screen? The population coming from a country of around 22 crore people uh, and living in a city of around 20 million people, you have a where the population of a country is two-thirds majority is the youth between 18 to 35 years. And so you can very well imagine that we are mostly interested in playing outdoor sports, mostly non-contact sports, such as cricket, football. Can we move forward, Abby? Uh, 
forward. Yes, so obviously ACL injuries occur primarily in non-contact sports and it, according to the Western literature, between 34 to 44 out of 100,000 people in the Western countries undergo annually an ACL reconstruction. But I've always been intrigued, why don't we go for repair? And uh, even though ACL reconstruction is the gold standard, can we move on to the next slide? So what I did was that during my training, I went back and looked at the old literature, what was written, written about repair and reconstruction primarily in the 1970s. ACL, was, ACL injuries were primarily treated by open repair. Fegan Campbell in 1930s did a lot of work on ACL repair, but they were mostly open repairs. And the downside was that they had poor midterm results. They would fail at five years. And what would happen was that they would go into osteoarthritis. So what happened in the 1990s as orthopedics evolved, arthroscopy jumped in and ACL reconstruction had a new direction. And with ACL reconstruction, better results were being yielded, especially midterm and long terms. And about 10 to 40% of patients still had re-rupture rates with the second knee at times get, getting involved. So then are we really moving forwards or have we just got onto a dead end wall? But then in the recent years, now, if I look back, repair, open repair was out of fashion. Now, arthroscopic repair is coming back in. And why is it gaining so much prop popularity? Now, this is the question that I've always wanted to ask. But obviously, you don't have people whom you can always turn to. But I was lucky enough to talk to Dr. Umarbad at times. And these are the questions that were during uh, these are the questions that were in my head at that time. Can we move on to the next slide, please? As previously stated by Murray, secondary osteoarthritis of the knee was described in more than 70% of injuries followed after 10 years of arthroscopic ACL reconstruction. So what is what should be the gold standard if the AC reconstruction arthroscopy is also yielding poor results in the 10 year follow up period. Can we move on to the next slide? And why is primary ACL repair now coming back in fact in popularity? I remember this quote by Sherman who said, Why to convert other collagen substitutes into ligament if the original can be preserved? And I'm a firm believer of it. I think we should try to preserve as much as the original tissue of any part of the body is. And this is why I always have these questions. Why do we reconstruct the ACL? Why can't we just preserve it? And we go move on to the other slide. So, so many questions were burning in my head. Can you, can you click? What is the difference between the ACL repair and an ACL reconstruction? What are the pros and cons of both options? And why are we going backwards instead of forwards in the ACL management? When I say we're going backwards, I mean, why are we going back towards repair rather than going towards something else? What has changed recently that ACL repair is producing good results? Is it that we have found an understanding of what, which tiers to operate upon? Is it the arthroscopic nature of the technique that is producing better results? What and what evidence does the current literature support? 
So I would like these questions that I had during my training and Dr. Omar but answered and he answered them handsomely. And these are the questions that I would like the house to know because these questions are very important for the next 20, 30 years if I see regarding ACL. And I think Dr. Omar Bhatt is the best person to talk about. And he has done more than I think 50 odd primary ACL repairs after Gregory de Ferris, who's done more than I think 300 cases. I think he is the second best in, in the world currently in primary ACL repair. And I'd like to hand over Dr. Omar Bhatt to answer these questions, not just for me, but for the rest of the audience today. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tahir. It was an amazing presentation, brief and concise, and the questions will be answered soon. Uh, so the reason I said back to the future is very clearly evident from the fact that what Tahir mentioned, that why have we have gone back to the future? So today I will describe about ACL repair, why we are doing it, what is the recent evidence, and what was the historic facts. This is the place where I work. I still work in Circle Bath Hospital in England as a visiting consultant. And I work in AO Hospital Karachi and also in Lahore. These are my current educational positions. I'm approved the fellowship program director for Pakistan Sports Surgery Program. So if we look at the historic fact, actually it was many, many years ago, even before 1970, where even the Roman Empire physicians realized the fact that actually ACL is a very important ligament. Why? Because we know almost 200,000 ACL injuries happens in USA. Reconstruction is still considered the gold standard. But we also know from the fact that there are many complications when reconstruction fails. And these are the complications which are evidence-based and documented. So we have to be also aware that patients are 20% unsatisfied. Anterior knee pain because of the patella tendon graft, quartz atrophy and osteoarthritis are all proven risk of reconstruction. But why we thought that ACL is perfect? We were not right maybe in the beginning because Mayor Robson performed the first ACL repair in 1903 when he did repair of both ACL and PCL together in a minor and Hay Groves in 1970s started to publish work on ACL reconstruction. In early 70s and 80s, Palmer popularized ACL repair and found good results. But during the same era, Fiagen and Kern realized the fact that actually midterm result of ACL repair is not good. So what was that paradigm shift that suddenly multiple randomized control trials showed that ACL reconstruction is far superior than repair? And these are the answers I will try to justify during this presentation. So what was the evolution of primary ACL repair through the prism of modern day understanding? Sherman actually made this happen. He published in 1991 subgroup analysis and divided ACL tear into four categories. Type one, when there is a tear on the proximal part and less than 30% separation. Type two, when it is more than 30% separation from the proximal part. Type three, when there is a mid substance tear and type four, when there is a tibial avulsion tear. And he did some detailed analysis to look what was the reason that primary ACL repair were failing. So when he looked at the data, he realized that the mid substance tear, when they were repaired, the results were very bad. 23% satisfaction, 61% satisfaction, 20% revision by Odenston, and 17% failure by Kaplan. But when he looked into detailed literature, during the same era, he realized the fact that actually proximal tear were doing quite well. With 75 patients published by Kuhne in 1991, showed proximal tear four-year follow-up was zero failure with 89% negative pivot shift. Another study by Ganelin showed 42 patients proximal tear five to seven years follow-up, 86% satisfaction, keeping in mind that these were all open repair, even in 1993 and 1989. So what was the factor that played this paradigm shift from a repair to reconstruction, even though both the procedure were initiated in early 90s and 70s together? During that time, Google and MBS were not as much understood by people and surgeons. Foreign language was difficult to understand, so ACL repair were written as ACL suturing. Arthroscopic company 
pushed a lot of investment in arthroscopic implants and equipment. And obviously, comparing to that, doing an open ACL repair was not considered gold standard by surgeons. But the most important question is that has ACL has potential to heal? So if you look at this video, you can see that this patient has got good vascularity. The graft is still there, but it has got positive Lachman test and grade one pivot shift. Can this ACL heal? So there are two famous surgeons we all know, Sonari Kotet and Murray, who published their work. And they found that 26 tissue were harvested from the ruptured end of ACL. And in Murray series, 23 tissue were harvested. They looked at the histology to find out vascularity. And they found that the ruptured end of ACL has got much higher vascularity, synovial infiltration, numerous fibroblasts and myofibroblast, showing that the ACL do have potential to heal when they rupture from the proximal end. We also conducted the first world histological study comparing partial versus complete tear from AO Clinic Hospital. Our histopathologist asked us to take samples from 20 ruptured ACL, one from the proximal side, one from the tibial side, and we compared also six normal samples in a patient who were undergoing non-ACL reconstruction surgery. We use CD34 immunohistochemical staining to which expresses intralumen uh, blood vessels. We use hematoxin and eosin staining to look at the fibrocytes. And these were our results. When we compared cellular characteristic of 52 samples from the tissue, we found significant higher values of synovial angiogenesis, ligament angiogenesis, and fibrocytes. But the most exciting part of our study was that the remnant angiogenic potential significantly decreased one year after injury, showing that if you preserve the stump or if you repair, there is a potential to heal. Our study was accepted in UK Biological Knee Society, where I presented it as an oral presentation and also during ICRS. So let's look at back to the future, why we decided to go back to repair, what's in the market now, what we are using and how we're doing the repair. So the technique available now to do ACL repair, our suture anchor technique, bridge enhance ACL reconstruction, internal brace, and dynamic intraligament stabilization. Total number of published works so far are limited, but obviously the interest to us ACL repair has started only five years ago. So we are hoping that more and more published work will come. My inspiration started from Grigor de Phyllis, a good friend of mine who actually inspired me a lot to do ACL repair. He has published the most work, done more than 300 ACL repairs so far. And in his study, he found that suture ankle repair with including now he uses internal brace does heal ACL much better. And he did a lot of ACL repair in multi-ligament reconstruction and in patients who are over 30 years of age. Bridge and hence ACL repair has been extensively studied by Murray. The trial started in 2016. The trial started in 2016, the very limited number of patients, 10 patients selected, 2019 the results were published. Two years follow-up showed similar result to ACL reconstruction. You take a blood, you put a sponge into the ruptured site and you pass the suture from the femoral cortex and either suture it or put an endo button. And that was the method of bridge enhanced ACL repair. Internal brace, most of us know who are a knee surgeon, majority of the published work done by Gordon McKay, who was the inventor of internal brace. The concept is like a seat belt. You pass the suture from the ACL graft, you pass it through the femoral cortex, you fix it on the femoral side with endo button and onto the tibial side using swivel lock or any other anchor. 68 patient case series, one year follow-up in Gordon McKay series showed 1% failure and 4% revision. Dynamic intraligament stabilization has been extensively studied by Egley and Henley and most number of procedure done so far in Europe, 300 patients. Three to five years follow-up, but the failure rate was much higher because it was a steep learning curve. The other problem with dynamic intraligament stabilization is that it's almost like doing an ACL reconstruction and you have to remove the dynamic ligament suspensory mechanism six months post-op, making surgery much more tedious rather than one, you have to do twice, once to do the surgery and second to remove the metallic work. But in some surgeon series, they feel that it is much more valuable to do this procedure rather than internal brace. So what is my technique? Why do I decided to do ACL repair in the first place? Because I see a lot of patients in Pakistan who are over 30 years of age. I see a lot of patients who have multi-ligament injury. I saw a lot of patients who are not able to afford the surgery, which is reconstruction is much more expensive comparing to a repair. 
So I, my concerns were drill tunneling because I believe that if you do a repair, you shouldn't drill the tunnel, you shouldn't put any metal work. That removal of the hardware should be easy, ease of doing revision and the cost. So I decided and I initiated on the journey of single anchor ACL repair. Most of my tear is type one and two for proximal and for tibial avulsion is type four. No tunnel and easy to revise. And that was my approach. Type one and type two tear, no age limit, clinical examination plus MRI scan, good tissue quality and somebody with ICRS grade, like for example, in this video, this gentleman is almost 32 years of age, 140 kg. He had symptoms of instability. And as you can see on the video, his proximal tear is still intact and he's got positive anterior draw test and we repaired his ACL using single anchor. Let me take you through quickly how I do it. First of all, you need to have shoulder and knee instruments. If you are a good shoulder and knee surgeon, you can easily perform ACL repair. As you can see in the video that I do clinical examination and then you can use any type of suture passer, either Scorpion. I use one locking stitch and one Bunnell running stitch. I like to stitch up to the most proximal part, as you can see in the video. And then I use striker relax anchor that has got a mechanism of pull and push. You put the anchor at 90 degree. It's a single anchor 4.5. And the good thing and the beauty about this anchor is that not only it pushes, but also pulls the tensioning mechanism to allow the graft to go into its position. The procedure is done with simple three stab incision. You don't have to open up the knee joint. It is pain free procedure and patient can walk back very easily in few hours. MRI scan, as you can see, all my patient in the study has under, underwent MRI scan six months post-op. So PCL is visualized and here is the ACL repair six months post-op showing nice containment of the ACL tissue. Our ongoing study, almost 52 patients performed so far. No failure, no revision, IKD and Tegner score has been done and all patients have MRI scanned six months. Another example of the gentleman, he is also above 30. I prefer doing ACL repair in more elderly patient, more older one over 25 to 30. And you can see they have pull and push mechanism to repair the ACL in position. And they're quite rock solid. And interestingly, patient actually go into more professional sports much easier with repair comparing to reconstruction. So not only I repair the proximal part, but I also repair the tibial sided avulsion using anchor rather than screw. And these are the result of my ACL repair in some of the patients. If I whiz through it, you can see this gentleman is jumping. The second chap after ACL repair is jumping on a single leg. And his right leg had ACL repair just for comparison. And this is the 42 year old gentleman, a military soldier who I did ACL repair. So in conclusion, preserve the nature, save the ACL. We are all in lockdown. And I thought that in this difficult moment of lockdown, when we are all far away from our friends, from all the things we need to enjoy, just like being in prison. But one of the biggest leader in the world once mentioned that as I walked out of the door toward the gate that I would let to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. Thank you very much.